Y'all getting double blessed. I'm not singing. <laughs> I mean, after the last two songs, oh, I'm redeemed, <laughs> and I'm redeemed because he's alive. How many? Can, I mean, Christians, not back up. There's a lot of professing Christians, but how many believers on Christ? can say, I am redeemed because He is alive. I know Logan had no idea what I was going to talk about tonight, did you, brother? Did you know what I was talking about tonight? No. I hope Jennifer had a small idea because I told everybody to go home Sunday and read the first chapter of Hebrews. Well, did you learn anything? Yeah. <laughs> Good. But I'm glad that I know who I worship tonight. Amen. I'm going to open up with a question. And then I'll get to my text, sermon, lesson, whatever you want to call it. What God put on my heart for tonight. Brother Ed, you're a very big UK fan, right? Yep. John Calipari, walk through that door right now. What would you do? I'd welcome the church. Come sit down and fellowship with us. Okay. If the President of the United States walked in, although I do not like I'd him, tell, I do not like his policies. I'd tell him, sit down and listen. I'd tell him, sit down and listen. We're going to convert you to Islam. His position. Yes. Who he is. Number one, I'm ex-military, so he is my commander in chief. As much as I don't like it, and I can, I'll, I'll say that I'm not being political. I'm just being plain fact. I still have that right in the United States of America to say I may not like our leadership. I do not like the direction my country's going. But I would still reverence Barack Obama if he walked in this door. If the Queen of England walked through this door, I would reverence who she is. As long as they reverence my Lord. Exactly. I'm glad you made that point because that's the point I'm trying to get. But although there are great leaders in this world, from no work should we worship them. There is no preacher, politician, doctor, lawyer, or common man that desires or, or deserves our worship. There is only one that we worship. Even the angels worship him. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. I can stop right now with that point and say I'm done. But you know, I, I, won't give you... I saw a license plate one time that said, I love my wife, but I worship my Lord. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I don't worship my wife. No. I love her. Sometimes I like her. <laughs> Sometimes. And I really like it when she cooks. As you can tell, she does that pretty good. But I don't worship her. Johnny, you just like it when anybody cooks. <laughs> but, man, we can laugh a little. We can smile. We're God's children. I'm going to read the first nine verses in Hebrews, and then I'll get into the lesson. I, I know y'all got pieces of paper that's got a lot of scriptures on them. And I may try to get to all of them. I'm not... You make no promises or nothing. Sister Martha about scared me before church. She thought I'd done changed my mind. After she studied this all week. I said, no, and if God changes my mind right now, I'm going to be kind of upset. Physically, I would be upset. Not spiritually. Physically, because I went through a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on this. But first chapter of Hebrews, verse 1 says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time passing to the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, of whom he hath appointed heir of all things, of whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholded all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. 
For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I forgot, begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. <coughs> but unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy, of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. There before God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of, the glad, of gladness above thy fellows. Brother James, will you bless the reading of the word, please? Dear Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus And bless Brother Mike right now. He gives us the word. And let him speak the truth. And let the Holy Spirit be all over him right now. When we know him. Whatever he comes out of his mouth is the truth, Lord. Amen. 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 Stop on that first verse for just a second. God, who has sundry times and in divers manners, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. At sundry times, at different times, and in various manners, he spoke to man through the prophets all the way up until the time of Jesus. He spoke through Abraham. He spoke through Moses, Elijah, Jeremiah. Any, anybody in the Old Testament, he spoke to through a man. He never spoke through anything else. Well, except for one time he did speak to a donkey. That's all the reason I always said I ain't got sense of a mule because at one time a mule spoke, it made sense. I and mean, a lot of people can't do that today. Amen. But he spoke to us through the prophets. But at the time of Christ, things changed. It had been 400 years since there had been a prophet in Israel. Malachi was the last one. And before Christ, whenever a prophet died, God had to appoint somebody else. Look at Elijah. He carried him away in a chariot. There was Elijah standing there to take his place. There's always been a prophet in Israel up until the time of Malachi to hear what the Word of God said. There was always a priest in the temple to approach the Holy of Holies until the time of Christ. Because there was a veil. Brother Walls gave the dimensions of it one time. I can't remember, but I just know it was big. And it was thick. Man could not see into the presence of God. A priest went in there once a year. And they tied a rope to him with a bell on it. As long as that bell was tinkling, they knew everything was okay and the priest was righteous. But if the priest wasn't righteous, God struck him dead and they had to pull him out. Aren't we glad we don't have to go through a priest today? Amen. Amen. Go back into the book of Genesis. And I'm going to talk a little while on who we worship and why. First three verses of the book of Genesis. Real simple says, In the beginning, before time ever was, you could say, time has always been eternal, but before this earth was here as we know it now, God created the heaven and the earth. I didn't say there was a big bang. I didn't say there was an atom that exploded and all this happened. God spoke and it happened. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Three words there. And God said. He spoke this world into existence. He spoke every tree every blade of grass, every star in the sky, the sun, the moon, everything he spoke into existence. All the animals, even a snake, even a pesky wasp, he spoke into existence. Then, he took dust of the earth, spat upon it, molded it into man, and breathed the breath of life into him. He created the angels by speaking them into existence. He created man from the dust of the earth. The first chapter of John, John 1 and 1, a very familiar passage. In the beginning was the Word, and God said. 
And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And God said His express Word. 14th verse says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And God said, in the beginning was the Word. The express Word of God spoke His world into existence. The express Word of God became flesh and dwelt among man in the form of Jesus Christ. He left His earthly throne. Heavenly throne. I'm sorry. I get, my mind gets ahead of He left His heavenly throne to become a man. He made Himself lower than the angels. Although He was higher than the angels because He was the express Word of God. He was God made flesh. He still took upon earthly flesh to bear our sins to Calvary. Who are you worshiping tonight? I saw a song Sunday night that said Majesty. As I said, before Jesus came, God spoke to the prophets by a visual aid, a burning bush, a donkey, a rod, a lot of things God used to get his point across. But Jesus was in a class by himself. His earthly life was a visible manifestation of God's invisible nature. No man has seen God. Moses couldn't even look upon God. He let him see the hind parts as he was passing by. Because in your earthly, natural eye to look upon the glory of God, it would have killed you. Plain, sweet, and simple. But God, invisible nature, had to become flesh and well among men. That through that we might be saved. Until Jesus, they had the law, but the law wasn't perfect. If you go back in the book of Exodus when Moses was given the law, the Israelites was already breaking it before he ever gave it to them. They were making calves to worship. I mean, before the law was even given, the law was broke. Excuse me. I'll pray this runs out because the quicker it runs out, the quicker I show up. I know Sister Mark don't come down to me. <laughs> but, no, that's all that's keeping you going. You might as well stay That's not what's keeping that's me going. That's right. <laughs> I just keep it in my mouth wet. But, like I was saying, before the law was ever given to man, man had already broken. If it had been perfect, it wouldn't have pushed sin forward for another year. That's all the law did. That's all the sacrifices did. It did not forgive sin. It pushed it forward. Until Jesus came to earth. Until the Word of God became flesh and dwelt among men. Christ, no prophet had the complete message of God before Christ. Because they couldn't know it. They had never been in His presence. Christ had been in the presence of God from the beginning. When a prophet, like I said earlier, when a prophet died, it required God to find a new spokesperson. When Christ arrived and said, It is finished on the cross, there was never a need for another spokesperson. Right. Never a need for another prophet. No new revelation was to be given because it had been filled on Calvary. Everything the prophets spoke of from the time of Adam and Eve to the time of Malachi to the time of Christ had been fulfilled. The law was fulfilled. He was the final sacrifice. Who do you worship tonight? I'm going to give some definitions real quick. I looked these up. Nelson's Bible Dictionary defines worship as reverent devotion and allegiance and pledge to God. Rituals or ceremonies by which the reverence is expressed. The English word worship comes from an old English word worship. Worship, as I said, a word which denotes the worthiness of one receiving special honor or devotion. There's only one being, one person I know that deserves our worship. And it's not a basketball coach, a political leader. It's Jesus Christ. Not even the angels deserve our worship. There's a lot of people that go around worshiping angels, but I'll get to that in a minute. There's no word in the Bible you can back it. 
praise. An act of worship or acknowledgement of which virtues or deeds to another are recognized and extolled. I serve a risen Savior. Amen. His deeds are recognized. He died on the cross. A perfect work was completed on the cross. Amen. He rose again on the third day victorious over death, hell, and grave. He ascended into heaven with a promise to come back. I praise that. David prayed three times a day as customary to men. He praised seven times a day. So no matter how many times you pray, you need to pray. Praise him twice that much. Yep. For everything you ask God for, thank him twice. Amen. You ever think of that? Lord, give me this. Lord, give me this. Lord, I need this. Lord, I want this. How many times will we just stop to say, I love you, Lord, and I praise your name Amen. without asking for nothing? Amen. We are a give me world, a give me nation. No, I'm not knocking people on welfare if they need it. I'm not knocking people on disability. I'm on it. But we are have come to a nation that is lazy. Yep. L A Z Y lazy. We won't give, 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 give. You know the Christians, the people in the not the Church of God, but people who claim to be religious, and all religion is is a cover for sin. But yep. people. That are religious. That's all they want. God give me. God give me. God give me. He's not a welfare system. Yes, right. you, it don't matter how many times you post this on Facebook and say you you share this, you'll be blessed. Right. It don't work that way. God's not a magic genie. You can't go to the land and get something. Amen. He's worthy of our praise. Amen. He's worthy of our worship. Amen. But he's not a magic genie. He is who created us. Amen. And when we come to that realization. Then we'll start getting the blessings from God that we deserve. Until then, guess what? If He don't do another thing for you, He's already given you life. Amen. He already gave His Son to die for you. I don't know no way alive I can say that today. Amen. And the word hallelujah. My notes are kind of place. But it was a command to worship. Psalm 71, 6 and 14 says, By thee I have been holding up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's vows. Praise shall continually. I'll just find it. I thought I had it broke down. Read 8, Mike. Huh? Read 71, 8. I mean. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. My praise shall be continually of thee. The psalmist David said, My praise shall be continually of thee. Going over to the 14th verse, it says, But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. Every day, I need to praise God more than I praised him yesterday. I need to praise him tomorrow more than I praised him today. I'm 54 years old. When I was 6 years old, I knelt at an altar and gave my heart to God. I started at the Lamb Church. I'm sure there's a few people who knows where that is. The old church. Yeah. And I need to praise Him more today than I did even that's 40 right. some years ago. Wow. Well, how can you praise Him more now than you did then? Because He's done more for me since then than He did then. Yes, He saved my soul that day. I was led to an altar by the Holy Ghost. The power of the Spirit of God led me to an altar. When I received Jesus Christ as my Savior, I was filled. No, I did not have the gift from, but I had the Holy Ghost. When I was 17, I received the gift from the Holy Ghost. Tongues. But, was it the tongues that saved my soul? No. Was it the water I was put in for Jackson's pond? No. There were a lot of people went down that pond, but that pond didn't save me. It was the blood that Jesus Christ shed on Calvary that saved my soul. I will continually and will just praise thee more and more. Hallelujah is a Hebrew word used to express joy, praise, and thanksgiving. It was a standardized call to worship in the temple. You come into church and somebody says, Hallelujah. A lot of people sit and look. Some people say, Hallelujah back. But it was a standardized call in the temple. When the priest or whoever said hallelujah, 
the people started worshiping. No, there wasn't a loud, red, bumptious noise. That's praise. It wasn't music. Love it. That's blessing. It wasn't running the aisles. Been there and done that. Love it. That's still a blessing. Worship is reverence, praise to God. Simply fall on your knees, stand where you are, raise your hands there. Back in the old days, it was customary for the men to put their face on the ground in praise of God. Because still, they was not supposed to look upon Him, not even to feel when His presence was in the temple. They wasn't supposed to look upon Him. Thank God we can look. We don't have to put our face on the ground, but we still need to reverence who God is. He in the last day spoken unto us by his son, verse 2, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom he made the world. Jesus is a natural heir, as he is the only begotten Son of God. John 3 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave. Nobody took him. He gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. His only begotten son. If you was a king of a land, your only son would be heir to everything you had. Right? Jesus Christ as the only begotten son of God is heir to everything that God has, which includes his world. Satan may be the prince of the air right now, but he don't own the world. He has no control except what we give him in our life. Amen. Did you hear what I said? The storms that come up, God rebuked them. And then he calmed the sea because he made the sea. Jesus stepped on into the boat and said, Peace be still. He rebuked the storm. Mm -hmm. Who are you worshiping tonight? Oh Think about it. The Word became flesh and dwelt among me. And I've got a lot of scriptures. I don't know how much I'm going to get to. Don't. I'm going to try and get a point across. So. The same word that said, and God said, let there be light, hung on Calvary, and said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Hung on Calvary and looked at John and said, behold thy mother. Make sure his earthly mother was taken care of when he died. Behold thy son. Make sure there was somebody. The same God that spoke the animals into existence hung on that cross and said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. The same one looked at the thief and said, This day shall thou be with me in paradise. The same one hung there and said, It is finished. The complete work of God was finished. On Calvary. He died. The veil split in the temple. The man saw into the Holy of Holies for the first time since the temple was created in the wilderness. Who are we worshiping? <coughs> that same son went into the grave, come out victorious, ascended into heaven, and is now sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me and you. There's only one name under heaven given by man where we must be saved. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. There's only one intercessor for everything you've got wrong in your life. That's Jesus Christ. Right. Who are we worshiping tonight? Right. Right. Have we stopped and thought how we honor Him in His house? I'm talking about this temple here. I'm not talking about this building. We, this is a gathering place to worship together. But when we're outside that door, are we still worshiping? Do we honor Him in our temple? I can say I fall short because I eat things that's not good for me. But don't go in that blackberry cobbler was good the other night. Did I say it was good for me? No, but it was good. Now I'm going to get to Worshiping of angels for just a minute. The fifth through the ninth verse. I've got a lot more scriptures I can read. They're on that piece of paper. Take them home and read them. I'm going back to Hebrews.
being made so much better than angels as he by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. You've got the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, which are warring angels. You've got all other kinds of angels. Michael and Gabriel had great names. I mean, it was him. I think it was Michael who stood between Satan and Daniel when Daniel prayed for 21 days, waiting for the Lord to answer. Michael was born against Satan. Hey, guess what? Satan used to be an angel too. Mm -hmm. He was the priest. You know what happened? He wanted to be worshipped. That was something that was not given to him. There's only one person in the world. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father now. We cannot worship God except through His Son. There is nothing we can ask the Father except through His Son. Boy, oh, I worship you, Lord. I worship you. Are you worshiping God or are you worshiping through the Son, which is the only way you can approach the throne? You cannot approach God without going through His Son. Huh? No ifs, ands, or buts about it. The sixth verse says, Again, when He bringeth into the first begotten, into the world, he said, that let all the angels of God worship him. It didn't say let the angels worship each other or let man worship the angels. We are to worship Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ only. That's pretty simple, ain't it? Who do we worship? Why do we worship? I'm going to read two more verses and I'm going to shut up. Revelations 19 and 10. John was looking into the heavens and the angel had showed him a lot of things. And John said, And I fell at his feet to worship him. He was going to worship the angel that showed him all everything that was going on. And he said unto me, See, thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The angel told John, I am thy fellow servant. Right. Wow. Right. So, John was not to worship that angel. He was to worship Jesus Christ. The 22nd chapter of Revelation, verse 9. Like I said, he was still looking at the angels. I'm going to go ahead back to verse 8. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard them, when I heard, had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said unto me, See that I do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and thy brother the prophets of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. Now, who do we worship? Why do we worship? I was talking to Brother Ed and Brother Jamie before church. Yeah, I got most of this out of a Sunday school book. God laid it on my heart and I was looking for stuff on it. On true worship. And there is a series of lessons that's probably 12 weeks long if I wanted to get into it. On who we worship. How we are to worship, why we worship. I'm not getting into all that. I just want you to stop and think for just a minute. Who do you worship? Are you worshiping angels like a lot of people do? I'm not. I live with an angel. Sometimes she's got horns holding up her halo, but I don't worship her. I can, I can do nothing. But, now I'm going to say this, I can do all things. I can do nothing in myself. I am nobody. Yes, I'm a child of the king. I'm a first class citizen. But here on this earth, I am nobody. But, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Brother Roger, you get up here and walk up on this platform and sing. Could you do that on your own? You couldn't, you couldn't do nothing except through Christ. Yes, 
the mess I make on that guitar, I do it in praise to my King. Amen. I do it for Him and Him only. I don't care if nobody ever hears it. I'm still going to make a joyful noise. I will say about me like I've said about a lot of other people. Sometimes it's more joyful when I shut up than it is when I start. But I know whom it is I serve and I know whom it is I worship. And that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The Apostle Paul says, I know nothing save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. It is good enough for Him. It's good enough for me. Take your scriptures home. Read them. Dig. I'm going to say, you want to know something about the Bible? Learn who, what, when, where, how, and why. Of every verse you read. If you learn that, you'll learn something. I well, I had a whole bunch more wrote down. Y'all see I did. But it's gone late. There's people who've got to get up early in the morning. I'm sure she's Shannon does. She'd give me that eye roll like, shut up, I'm tired. <laughs> If you don't take, forget. If you want to take Sunday and continue this, I, I'll let you have it. I got a lesson ready, but if you want it, you can have it. No, I can, but I'm going to tell you what. I can take 12 weeks to continue this. I just want you to stop and think. I'm not going to get into the depths of it. There's more. You can teach this for a year and not scratch the surface on who we worship and how we are to worship. But just remember, we worship Jesus Christ who was raised to a position of authority over the angels by his own nature because he is, was, and always will be the Son of God. Set at the right hand, not only of power, but of authority. Amen. You said if the king's right hand, you're at the hand of authority. That's the hand of the kingdom. And he's heir to everything God has because he is his only begotten Son. And us as his children make us heirs, joint heirs, joint heirs with Christ. Think of that. They say, My God owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Well, guess what? I own them same cattle. Amen. My God is making a street paved with gold. I own that street because I am his child. Amen. I'm joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And I can do one thing when I get to heaven, the angels can't do. I can say, I've been redeemed by blood divine. The angels do not know redemption's story. They was there and saw it unfold. But they do not know what it feels like to have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And I thank God I know just a little bit more than the angels now. I've been redeemed by blood divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. My all to Him I now reside. For I have been, I have been redeemed. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I know about that grace because I know whom it is I worship. Pray for me. I'm not giving an altar call tonight. I'm just going to say if you have anything you need prayer for, it's open. You need prayer for anything that's open. I know. Remember, my and Debbie's oldest niece. She's having some problems, and her fiance's kids are coming in from Missouri this Sunday. Yeah. He hasn't seen them in probably a year. Yeah. So she's nervous. I can understand. You got four kids coming to your house where only two people normally live. It's kind of a headache. And no, I do not agree with her lifestyle. I've told her that. She's divorced, living with a man. She knows how I feel about it. I will say he's good to her, but that don't make it right in the eyes of God. I will say that. She's the one that has to answer for it. I don't have to answer for what she's doing, but I still got to love her. It's just like when I lived in apartments in Sturgis, a homosexual coming to me and said, I'm gay. I said, well, that's good. I'm happy. <laughs> I knew what he was talking about. Did I care? Yes, I cared about his lifestyle because it's wrong in the eyes of God. But do I hate him? No. Fifty people got killed Sunday in Orlando, Florida 
I am Muslim. Who, if you will look under the Sharia law or however you say it, homosexuality is a big no no even to them. But does that give you a right to go into a club and kill them? No. Does it give you a right to witness to them? Yes. But you know, the God I serve don't say go kill people because they don't believe like you. He says, love everybody. Enough said. I mean, Jesus Christ told me to love everybody. Two commandments he gave us, and we can't even obey them. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul, and love thy neighbor as thyself. The whole law hinges on that. But like I said, man, can't, couldn't keep the law from the day it was given. Thank God for grace. Pray for me. I hope you got something out of this. Go home.